so you do dispute resolution. What I get, let's start at the top. Like, what are some of the most common reasons why franchisees are are coming to you? Like, what what are the issues that they're facing with these franchisors? You know, with inflation the last couple of years being what it is and, and being so high, that's really caused a change in the costs it might require to open a franchise. And, you know, what we've seen the last few years is in the franchise disclosure document, there's an item called item seven. That's the startup cost, you know, what you would expect to pay uh, to get your franchise up and operating in your first three months generally. And those numbers, you know, a lot of times franchisors would just kind of keep the same numbers year over year. They wouldn't necessarily update them. You know, the franchisor attorneys will send the FDD to their client and say, hey, any updates? And they say, no, we're good, you know, and so... You know, I think that led to kind of some complacency and what happened the last couple of years is we've had lots of inflation. And so now clients have come to me, over, especially over the last year, this is the number one issue we've seen. If they said, hey, you know, it, it said it was 300 to 500,000 to open this business, but I'm getting estimates from contractors. I'm talking to people that just open and it's really now like 800,000. And, you know, it's we've had people double the high end of the range. We've had people 50 percent or more over the high end of the range. And so that creates a mountain of problems for franchisees when they're really just uh, don't know exactly how much it's going to cost to open that business. Wow. Yeah, that that can be a game changer because some some folks may just be kind of getting in by the skin of their teeth in terms of what they may be able to qualify for or having the the 20 percent down payment for for sba and it, it, they just may legitimately not financially be able to even open a business at at that that higher price point so uh, i i I want to talk about how people can prevent that in a second um, because I, I feel like it potentially could be pretty simple to to avoid that. Um, so obviously there may have been a, a little bit of a lack of due diligence on the on the front end, but what happens when they are in those situations? So what is that conversation with franchisees? Does that even look like? Do they even have any recourse at, at that point? Yeah, they do. I mean, because, you know, under the, the Federal Trade Commission's franchise rule, franchisors are required to provide, you know, basically accurate and reasonable estimates of what those startup costs are. So we've definitely had situations where clients have got in, um, you know, they haven't opened the franchise, but they're kind of in that early period where they've signed the franchise agreement, they paid the initial fees, they start to look at a potential location. And it's usually the, the costs that are going significantly over are, are the build-out costs. That's kind of the primary driver of costs going over the high end of the range. And so it's usually that person coming to us at that point and saying, gosh, I talked to a bunch of contractors, I got all these quotes, and it's going to come in way over what I thought it was. And I just, you know, I don't want to go forward with this. And, and, and that's when we usually start negotiating with the franchisor and exit and trying to recoup uh, a return of those initial franchise fees to allow that person to get out of the agreement. Yeah, interesting. And and so in the instances where, let's say the the franchisor, like they're they haven't they're in the middle of the year, so they haven't released their new FDD. Which obviously the following year that's going to reflect in the in the FDD, and that will then be updated. But in that gap, I mean, do they have any sort of responsibility to the franchisees? Because they're they're knowing the build out costs are are starting to come out high, and that it's not representative of what's in the FTD. Because they're dealing with their franchisees who are having that challenge, or probably hearing it outside of the FTD. Do they have any responsibility to communicate that verbally? Well, they actually legally they have a responsibility to update that disclosure document on at least a quarterly basis if there's a material change to any information in there and, and in a faster than quarterly basis in a lot of states like California. And so arguably, if the numbers are off, they should be amending that FDD to update it to the latest numbers um, immediately once they understand, hey, it's really going higher than what we thought it was. Um, you know, sometimes it's an issue of the left hand not talking to the right hand. You know, the ops team might know that, and the real estate team might know that the costs are higher, but the legal team or the executive team, you know, doesn't know. And so it's not going to communicate it across the whole way until a year's run. Um, but, you know, and there have been franchisors that we've seen that have updated their disclosure document three or four times in a year 
in the last couple of years because of that, you know, to stay up to date with those costs. If you enjoyed this short clip from the podcast, you can check out another short clip right here. Or if you want to watch the full episode of this podcast, you can watch that here. And remember, knowledge is not power. It's applied knowledge that's power. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.